Welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners. This one's part 34, all about drilling and reaming. If you drill a hole in a piece of metal, most of the time it will be fine. But if the hole needs to be either accurately sized or have a good surface finish to work as a bearing surface, then you need to use a special tool called a reamer. More about this later. First of all, I'd like to talk about drill bits. Sharp drill bits, blunt drill bits and incorrectly ground drill bits. I've never made a video feature showing how to sharpen drills. I was shown many years ago by a man called Roy Haynes, who was a very experienced precision engineer. And when I used to go over to his place, I'd say, Roy, show me one more time how to sharpen these drills. And as Roy was a very focused individual with infinite patience, he would show me again how to do it. This is not a double entendre, but it's all in the wrist action. I used to watch Roy sharpening drills and it was just a quick touch on the side of the grinding wheel with a very slight rotary motion from his wrist. The image of these two drills on screen at the moment have been there for a while, and this is intentional, because you really need to know what the drill should look like after it's been ground. The one on the right-hand side has never been ground, it's just as it came out of the box. If you look carefully, you will see there's a definite difference the main difference being that the one on the right hand side drills really good holes. In this clip I'm using the unground drill, the one that's perfect, to drill a hole. And the swarf is coming out of the hole about the same at each side. This is my box of imperial drill bits. and As you can see, some of them, the shiny ones, have been sharpened. And the ones with the dull tips really haven't been used much at all. How do you do it? You could buy a special tool called a twist drill grinding jig, either a self-powered one or one that fastens to your grinding wheel. Alternatively, you could spend some time with some old twist drills, reducing them to much shorter twist drills. Here's a good tip. This is the way I do it. I always have a known good twist drill in the close proximity of the grinding wheel, usually on the bench, so I can see it very clearly. And in my hand, I have the blunt drill. The principle is, when I've sharpened the blunt drill and it looks exactly the same as the new drill, then there's a good chance it's going to cut very well. If you practice quite a lot grinding twist drill bits, eventually you won't even have to look at the one that you're using as a pattern. You'll just know how to do it, with a bit of help from your calibrated eye. The drill in my hand at the moment that I'm just putting back into the drill set is a 3 16ths of an inch diameter drill that I had to shorten to drill some holes in an inaccessible place on my traction engine. Time to look at the combination of using drill bits and reamers. Not at the same time, you have to drill the hole first and then ream it. And what's the magnifying glass for? I find this invaluable these days to read the sizes on reamers, drill bits and taps, particularly on small reamers, drill bits and taps. The question is, how do you use a reamer to make a nice smooth hole in a piece of metal? It's a three part sequence. First of all, you need to drill a hole which is one imperial size less than the hole you want. Before using the reamer, slow down the speed of the lathe. If you ream too fast, the hole would be too big. With the lathe running slowly, you also need to slowly introduce the reamer into the hole and let the reamer cut. Do not force it through the hole. So it's drill the hole, slow down the lathe, then ream the hole. And don't forget to use some lubrication, particularly on steel. I wanted an accurately sized quarter of an inch diameter hole. And to do this, I used a drill which is one imperial size less than a quarter of an inch, which as you can see here is 15 64ths of an inch. You can of course use metric drill bits and then ream the hole to a quarter of an inch. Data for the sizes of metric drills for reaming are available online. To very slightly complicate reaming, there are many different sizes of reamer. Here are some small ones, followed by some larger ones. A reamer that has a squared end like this is called a hand reamer. But the reamer shown in the foreground is a Morse taper number two reamer. This is a machine reamer, and there's a difference between the two types. The machine reamer has a taper on it to fit in the tailstock. And the cutting flutes of the reamer at the other end of the taper are the same size all the way down. But on the other types that have the squared end like this, the hand reamers, 
The cutting flutes are tapered at the end. This is to make location easier, but bear in mind when reaming with this type of reamer you need to go in further. To complicate matters, there are also things called taper reamers, and these are tapered all the way down from the tip to the end where the cutting flutes run out. This type of reamer is designed to cut a tapered hole. So why do you want to cut a tapered hole? Well, think about it. With a tapered pin in a tapered hole, it's a very tight fit. In the same way as the most taper number two on the reamer in the previous clip fits very tightly into the matching tapered hole in the quill of the tailstock on a lathe. And another common application for taper reamers is making tapered holes to take tapered pins. This may sound obvious, but sometimes you can get confused. The hole that you need to drill through the piece of metal that you want to fasten together by using a taper pin needs to be the size of the small end of the tapered reamer. Please allow me to demonstrate. I'm using a twist drill that's just slightly under the size of the end of the reamer. I'm using a couple of pieces of scrap. I've made sure that the drill is exactly in the center and here I'm drilling a hole all the way through both the collar and the centerpiece. Take your time to make sure that this hole is exactly in the middle of the piece of bar. Once you've drilled the hole all the way through as demonstrated here, it's time to take the taper pin, check that it doesn't fall through the hole, and then start the reaming process, which takes quite a while. To demonstrate this principle, I'm using a couple of pieces of scrap brass, but most of the time you will find yourself reaming steel parts. You have to be very careful. You do not want to break the reamer off in the hole. This sequence is speeded up and heavily edited, because taper reaming a hole in a piece of metal does take a while. Lubrication is fairly essential, even with brass I'm using some lubrication. After about five minutes, the taper pin fits in about a quarter of an inch. I carried on until the point of the taper reamer stuck through the other side. And then very carefully, I carried on some more. If you over ream, then the taper pin will disappear into the hole. Once this taper pin is hammered into the hole using a soft hammer, the strength of the joint is amazing. But don't forget, if you dismantle the parts, the taper pin will only go in one way. You do not need to use Loctite products with taper pins. They hold themselves in position quite well without any of these type of adhesives. I can't really say a lot about these Loctite products. 603, 542 and 243 are the ones I use most of the time. Just to see what it was like, I bought some of this. This is called Bond Lock. It seems all right, but I think I'll stick with Loctite. These are all anaerobic adhesives. They start to work once they're starved of oxygen. And the different types are quite easy to recognize because they're all different colors. Loctite 603 retainer is green. Loctite 542 hydraulic seal is red. And Loctite 243, in common with a lot of other thread lockers, is blue. The Bond Lock hydraulic seal appears to be a sort of a brownie color. Never get these mixed up. Using retainer really will hold your parts in position fairly permanently. You would have to heat them up to quite a high heat to break the seal. And that concludes the episode. I'd like to say stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching, and as always, I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back, making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.